uh, I want to greet you, my viewer, and uh, to welcome you for this small discussion. Uh, I don't know whether you have noted of late, there have been increased cases of suicide. I was looking at the papers at the beginning of the week, and I realized in one of the police stations here within Nairobi, they have recorded 41 cases of suicide since January to where we are today roughly three months. And you look at news all over, you hear of cases of suicide. You hear of cases of people killing others. And therefore, as a counseling psychologist, it has attracted my attention. And I think it is good we have a candid discussion and we ask ourselves, why are these cases of suicide on the increase? I therefore want to welcome you to sit back and uh, watch this video as I discuss on what is suicide and what are the possible causes of suicide. And I want to encourage you to ensure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you like it. Make sure you leave a comment there. Make sure you share amongst your contacts. And this will really boost my channel. Now, when we talk about suicide, it means an intention to cause one's own death. It is the action that makes you to cause your own death intentionally when you are aware of what you are doing. That is what we call suicide. When you talk of homicide, manda, it is where someone takes his life and he takes the life of some other person or some other persons who he thinks are part of himself or herself. For example, we find a husband killing the wife and the children or we find a wife killing the husband and the children or we find a parent killing the children or even we find children killing the parents and killing themselves. That is what we call homicide. So of great concern will be why do we have the issue of suicide? Why do people, at what point does a person think it is necessary to commit suicide? And I want to say this. The suicidal ideation, suicidal ideation is the, the entertainment of ideas to commit suicide. They come in when as an individual you come to a point and you feel that you have lost control over your life and you cannot see any future, you cannot see any way out. And at this point, death becomes the only possible way. It becomes the only medium that will separate you from what is disturbing you and your peace. And my view, I want to say this. It does not just happen, but it's a process. And the process begins with the normal life issues, which we all go through. Actually, when you look at uh, the literature that we have, there is no single cause of suicide that has been identified. But what has been identified is a combination of very many factors that come together and make a person to feel they are out of control of their lives. Now, these factors, they are broadly divided into two. We have what we call stressors, and we have what we call the health issues. Now, when I talk about the stressors, these are factors that cause stress in life. Now, what do we mean by stress? Stress is the feeling of being unable to handle the life events and the life issues. 
the demands that come your way, you feel like you're not able to handle them. Now that's why I had said that for you to come to a point of committing suicide, it is a process. So how does this process happen? Number one, we have all the exposure to general life issues. Issues of relationships, issues of financial difficulties, issues of losing our loved ones, issues of performing poorly in academics, and so on and so on. Now when those things come into our life, the second thing is that they create anxiety. Anxiety is that feeling of not being sure of what will happen. So when the issues of life are coming or they are about to come, we become anxious. And when this anxiety prolongs, it generates into what we are calling stress. So that is step number three, stress. Now stress is divided into two areas. We have what we call acute stress. And this one I have discussed in my earlier episodes. I would advise you to check. Acute stress, it is that which you can be able to foresee the solution and it is short term. For example, issues to do with paying rent, that's acute. Issues to do with paying school fees, that is acute. It is something that you that is regular and you can see how to go about it. Even if you're not very sure how exactly you'll do it, in the near future, you will be able to do it. That is acute stress. And this is not dangerous. Then we have what we call chronic stress. Now, chronic, it is when stress persists and it comes to a point that you cannot see the end of it. For example, you have lost a relationship and you cannot see how do I make up, how do I get into another stable relationship. You have lost a job, how do I get into another job. So if this one is prolonged and we do not get an amicable solution, then it makes you to shift to a place we call depression. Now depression, it is that feeling that you have no hope. It is a feeling of hopelessness. It is when you feel that you are not worth. It is when you have a lot of sadness. It is when you realize now you have lost interest in things that previously used to uh, to excite you. That's when we say you have depression. At the onset of depression, there are possibilities of uh, getting the solution. But if the solution does not seem to come by, then at that point now, it is when suicide appears the only solution that is left. So we have said, number one, every one of us is exposed to life issues. Number two, there is anxiety. Number three, there is stress. Number four, there is depression. And then it is in the depression that you feel like you want to commit suicide. Now, going back to what I had said, Suicidal thoughts are brought about by a combination of stressors and health issues. Now, stressors are factors that cause stress in our lives. They are things that make us to feel that we have lost. And I've already mentioned some of them. I've talked of financial losses. I've talked of relationship issues. Maybe there is a breakup in your relationship. There is divorce. There is bullying. There is harassment and so on. Issues to do with poor academic performance. You are performing poorly, especially for the children. There is a lot of pressure. There is a lot of uh, pressure from your parents, from your colleagues, from teachers, and so on. And uh, issues to do with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the environment in which you are living in. Maybe you feel discriminated. You feel that you're not wanted. Those are some of the many stressors that we have in life. The second cause of suicidal thoughts are health issues. Now, health issues have to do with, the, with issues that come into our personal health and they cause what we call significant impairment in our functionality. And of great concern, as we discuss about matter suicide, is what we call mental illnesses. A mental illness is a significant impairment in the functionality of the brain or the mental capacity of a person. 
and it impairs, it, it interferes with the ability to make the right decisions, it interferes with the ability to solve uh, problems well, and so on. We have a set of mental illnesses or mental uh, challenges. We have the so-called bipolar, we have what we call the major depressive uh, 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 or the, uh, major depressive syndrome. We have what we call uh, anxiety di disorders. We have what we call the mood disorders. All these we have the schizophrenia. All these are combinations of health issues. And closely related to issues of health, it is when you are experiencing a lot of pain. And this pain could be as a result of uh, a chronic sickness that has been diagnosed in your life. And uh, after the issue of health, the third reason which causes suicidal thoughts is now the use of substances, the use of drugs. And I want to say this, my viewer, as I still encourage you to ensure that you have subscribed, you have liked the channel and make sure you leave a comment. When you feel like you're not in control, people want to escape. And one of the easier escape routes is drugs. You find people are engaging in alcohol. People are engaging in bang smoking. People are taking cocaine and so on. Now, this drugs abuse also comes in now actually to accelerate the health issues into the negative side and to accelerate the stressors into the negative side. So the use of substances also makes people to easily slide into suicide. And therefore, my view, I want to encourage you that you need to assess yourself. You need to see what are the stressors that are in my life, what are the mental issues, the health issues that are in my life, and am I engaging in drugs? Not only in your life, but also amongst the people that are near you. And when you see these things, then you should be able to move. Thank you so much for watching. I encourage you to uh, keep it here in this channel. Uh, in the next episode, I'll be discussing about the warning signs. What are some of the signs that you can look at and see and uh, be able to conclude that there is a likelihood of suicide? I will also be discussing about the myths. What are some of the things that we believe about suicide which are not true? And in my last episode, I'll discuss what is it that we can do to ensure that we prevent these suicidal cases, to ensure that ourselves or even our loved ones do not get into suicide. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this channel. My name is George Kimani. I'm a counselor. In case you need any help, you can contact me uh, through 0720. 322-961-0720-322-961. I'm based in town. You can come in case there is any help that you need. We will be able to offer to you. We are called the Stream Counselors and we thank God for this. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching.